both the beast and the false prophets were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. What does the Bible say here? How did they deceive those who had the mark of the beast? By performing signs. The generation that loves signs, even when the Lord said, this generation will not receive a sign, that generation is the one that will be deceived and will take the mark of the beast. Are you hearing me? Everywhere, people are trying to plan to avoid the mark of the beast. You better tell them. Yeah, people have to say, listen, the way I'm looking at you, you have finished taking it. It's just remaining receipt. It's just the receipt you're waiting for. You have finished taking it. How do I know? You love signs. Hey, he has come to town. Hey, this is in town. Hey, they're in town. You're finished already. I know. You can... Wait on the last day. We'll discuss. We'll compare notes. I look at people. Where are you going to? Uh, I heard, are you sick? No. Where, so where are you going to? I want to see. You love to be bamboozled. So any Jack Rag and Tom Straw shows up. That, I mean, a human being makes people fall. Fall, does his hands like this. Does his hands like this. Does his hands like this. Does like this. You don't fall. He does like this. He does like this. He does, he does like this. He does like this. You fall. And you're in awe. How full of folly can you be? What, what, what was that? So you love magicians. The Antichrist has he owns you already and all you have. Believe me. The Jews seek a sign. The Greeks seek wisdom. We preach Christ and Him crucified. You don't ask him, this thing you're doing, what are you doing it for? Do you understand what a sign is? A sign points to something. A sign points to something. And someone comes. I remember years ago seeing videos. Of TB Joshua doing all sorts of funny things. Yeah, two, two, uh, 2000 and something. And he's, blah, 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 and someone, fla oh God, I was, oh God. I don't know if he still used to do things like that later. As if he's trying to kill people, fling them into walls. I'm like, what is this? To prove what? Why do you prove power in that way? Like, why are you performing? Like that. Can a, a servant of God get excited? Yes, that's not excitement. That is an attempt to, I, it's rubbish. And if we ignore all the fruit, the lies, the every other wrong thing that was obvious, that it, I am not even going to that. I've mentioned those things in the past. I'm referring to this move, this attraction to someone seeming to be able to do something. And I've told you, it's very easy. Dynamo, some young guy in UK, Bab Scardini in Lagos now. They are turning water to wine. They are working on water. So I'm telling you, you're finished already. They are flying into the air, ascending like Jesus. They are doing all of it. All they have done. All. And not once do any of them pretend to be Christians. Bab Scardini, he is a Muslim. Not once do they even try to say they are Christian. So you are in awe of these kinds of things. You ignore all the scriptures they break. You ignore all the lies they tell. You ignore all the obvious playing to the gallery, being a showman. You don't care. You're impressed by Why should that impress you? It's a bit irritating. I can understand. Okay, oh, he's healed. He's healed. That I understand. Okay, that's okay. That's a healing. But this joking, this, this, the Jews seek a sign. A wicked and adulterous generation seek a sign. Who said it? Answer me. A a wicked and adulterous generation seek a sign. Who seeks a sign? Yeah. Who said it? Jesus. Who said it? Jesus. Who, who talk him? 
Are you a wicked and adulterous generation? Why do you run after signs? Why don't you seek the Lord and live? Amos 4. Why don't you seek the Lord? Why don't you call on him to answer you and show you great and mighty things which you have not known, not seen, not known? If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Not if you see signs and wonders. This attraction to astonishing things, liking meetings, liking when someone prophesies in front of the whole crowd. It's nice. It's impressive. I enjoy it. I've told you many stories about such things. You know? You see, it happened far more than you know. Most times I'm standing here, I'm preaching, I'm teaching. I'm talking to specific people, people I don't know. People walk into our meetings and I read their life. I don't know them. They don't know me before. They know just like a few times, people that know them come and tell me after the meeting, ha, sir, ha, the only thing that was remaining for you is to call the guy's name. You finished, those two men that came in here, they're preachers, oh God, and this one just sent me a picture of his new car next to his church meeting place, and all I was preaching that day, as I just started, but not all, but segment, you know. I say, it's not about buying a big car and standing in front of, oh Jesus, I've got it. When the woman came and told me, he said, Sir, oh, he sent me the picture, a, an, S, an SUV, and he was, I felt so bad. Then it happened 200 more times. I stopped feeling bad. Well, I still feel embarrassed till today. Till today, it happens all the time. Those are specific words to people. But I'm not, you know, Moses. The people of Israel saw the greatest miracles under the hand of Moses and, and doubted him throughout. That is the thing. How do you harden your heart? Not by doubting the signs, but by not understanding and believing. All you're getting, get to understand me. Therefore, it is better to pursue understanding than to pursue signs. Let me end with this. What are the prayers that the Holy Spirit gave us to pray? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I pray that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding might be enlightened that you might know the hope of his calling, the riches of... He wants you to know. For it's the entrance of his word that brings light, not the seeing of a sign. The entrance of his word. He said, when I brought you in Jeremiah 7 out... Did I bring you to offer me sacrifices? I brought you out to obey me. Obey. Obedience is the strategy. Philippians 1 verse 9. This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight or understanding. This is my prayer. Every prayer Paul ever prayed was about. Every prayer I gave them, he said he was praying for them, was for understanding in knowledge wisdom through wisdom a house is built through understanding it is established through the knowledge knowledge it is every room is filled up with good and perfect gifts in all you're getting get to understanding cry out after wisdom wisdom and understanding say to wisdom you are my sister not signs Pray the right prayer. This is all I prayed in my university days. 1998-9, when God led me to Kenny Hagin's book, that's all I prayed. I, I keep telling you, I didn't pray for cars, wife, job. I didn't used to pray for those things. When the time came, I had all those things by the hand of God, often miraculously. I had them. Good job, married, wife, house, car, Another car, another car, another car. Not, not by going after any. So I can say with authority that you can have all these things people run after without asking for it. Because I lived it. I was praying one prayer for understanding, for wisdom, for understanding, for knowledge, for understanding, for insight. That's what I prayed. So as I'm standing here and sharing, and if you think anything I'm sharing reveals any depth of knowledge, it's because it's all I asked for. And I see people ask for everything and teach people to ask for everything. I teach you one thing. 
I preach one thing. Christ, him crucified. And we speak wisdom though. Among the mature, among those that are growing, that have grown, we say things that matter. We don't try to impress people with signs. Because the devil, Revelation 16, I, 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 let me give you two more scriptures. I don't think I'll read it. I'll just give you. Hmm? Signs. You want signs. Revelation 13, verse 13 to 14. The signs. They deceive. It deceive. Verse 14. Because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived those who dwell on the earth. Signs are used by Satan to deceive. Second Thessalonians 2. Verse 8, 9, 10, 11. It tells you that there will be signs, wonders, and miracles by the walking of Satan. And we think they will come and say, in the name of the devil I come. No. They will come and they will come in the name of Jesus. They will claim to be prophets of Jesus. Hey, Lord, save May you believe this while you still have a chance. They will tell you that Jesus is the Christ. They will come and say, I am he. Don't believe them. They will use signs and wonders. Matthew 24 verse 24. They use signs and wonders and deceive. Jesus warned you. They will say, ah, by the fruit. Look for their fruit. Ignore the signs. For the person wondering, what are you even saying, sir? Please, look for the fruit. Look at the fruit of the Spirit. Look at the people around them. Look at their lives. Look at the quality. If it is not generating fruit, if their emphasis is not on producing fruit, they are fake. They are by the working of Satan. Jesus told you, if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. Don't you understand? This deception is not light. It is powerful deception. Jesus warned us. We presumed we couldn't be deceived. And let him that thinks he stand take it less before. We ignored him. And therefore, millions around the earth have been deceived already. And have gone with false signs and wonders. People have operated by the working of Satan. And they don't know it's Satan. Because that spirit looks like an angel of light. But you were told that even Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. You were told. Paul told you that even if an angel from heaven comes to you and gives you another gospel, even if himself, he said, let them be accursed. King James will say, anathema. Anathema. It's a curse. Anything different from what he said. Therefore, people focus on what has been written. Because all scripture was given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Focus on this. And you will escape deception. Focus on signs. Run after wonders. Pretend you don't know. Or ignore the passages that tell you about Satan using signs, wonders, and miracles. Just like God used signs, wonders, and miracles. With the apostles it's called counterfeiting it's the nature of deception it's fake it looks like the real stop looking for that which does not look like the real and call it satan please don't think he will come looking different he will look like the authentic he has to to succeed look at the fruit insist give it time remember s-o-f-t-o scriptures is it scriptural? Others, what they are saying by the Spirit of God. Give it time. Fruit, fruit, fruit. And time. Scriptures, others that fear the Lord. Keep comparing with those who fear the Lord. Fruit and time. Pay attention to all this. Then opposition or persecution. If you use some of these as standards to know, then you will find out, I don't think that guy is real. 
Look at the fruit of his life, of his preaching. He doesn't seem to be interested in righteousness and people fearing God. He's interested in impressing people and gathering numbers. You see people boasting online like they are celebrities, fighting, discussing who has the most money. Crazy stuff. That fruit is not meekness, it is pride. Why do you struggle with whether it is of God or not? Do you understand these things? Have you heard these things? Do you understand these things? As Jesus asked, may your heart not be hard. 